all this needs to be in the pot. All right, y'all, we are back for another recipe. Hope you're all hanging in there during quarantine time. I'm kind of picking up where I left off last week. I still have quite a bit of food from the dinner party I mentioned that got canceled. I froze some of the stuff, but uh, in today's episode of recipe, I already come to you with an idea because about a week ago, I saw a post on Instagram from Nina of Nourish Atelier. Uh, she has a book called Bowls of Goodness, which I don't have and I haven't seen it, but I imagine it's beautiful because her Instagram is beautiful. But I took inspo from her. She posted a jackfruit laksa soup with turmeric. Uh, a laksa is like a spicy curry sort of noodle soup and it usually has shrimp or something in it, some kind of meat. Uh, similar to the golden curry noodle soup you've seen uh, on hotforfoodblog.com, but this time I'm gonna add jackfruit into the mix and maybe just tweak it slightly. Off the top of my head, I generally know what's in it, but we're just gonna make up this jackfruit laksa from scratch since that's how you're gonna be cooking now, right? And jackfruit is an amazing pantry staple. Actually, it was one of the things that was still in stock at Trader Joe's last I checked. Nobody bought it. It's so cheap too. It's like $1.99 US. The whole bottom shelf was full of jackfruit. So you can probably still find some if you have a TJ's near you or you have some jackfruit already in the pantry and you don't know what to do with it or you're exhausted of making the existing jackfruit recipes that I have. So I have already the jackfruit and onions that I made for my poblano jackfruit tacos. Never ended up getting used, haven't made tacos with it. So I froze half that mixture and we're gonna use what's left to make this laksa soup and we'll add add coconut milk and maybe some whole cumin seeds and curry and turmeric and chili flakes and all kinds of things to get the broth going. So let me just do some digging and see what else I can pull out to throw in this soup, okay? Okay then. Here's the jackfruit, here's the poblanos. I have cilantro, we're definitely gonna use that. I have stock, vegetable stock. We might want some of the vegan flavored chicken, uh, chicken flavored vegan bouillon base. Look, I've got coconut milk in the fridge, but do I have one not in the fridge? I don't think so. Uh, oh, pumpkin might be interesting. This is the cat's pumpkin. And it's not contaminated, I just opened it. So actually pumpkin would be great in the base of the soup because it's orange like the color we're kind of going for. Uh, and it's a nice thickener and it's nutritious. Also have some lemons and limes here we can use for acidity. We're probably gonna need some hot sauce, right? Of some kind, maybe? Sriracha. I also have gochujang. I also have chu chow chili oil. Love that stuff. Oh, I've got some sh shiitake still. So we'll use maybe those too, maybe? Celery. Carrot, tomato, cucumber, ginger. Oh, I have a ginger that I bought. This kind of uh, dino lacinato kale is great in a soup because it stays very fresh and hearty still. These are the cherry tomatoes you already saw last week. Okay, I think that's good now. And I have, I have more limes too. Okay, so there's the spread. This is what the jackfruit looks like. It's already really well seasoned. I actually caramelized the onions quite a bit. So this is a really flavorful mixture, but we're still gonna add more flavor for the actual soup base. We essentially don't need to do anything with this jackfruit until we wanna add it to the soup. I'm gonna add it right in at the end. But if you had, uh, you know, right out of the can jackfruit, I would say follow my uh, jackfruit poblano taco recipe and season it that way, caramelize the onions and do that first in the pot and then I think you should take that out of the pot leave whatever browning is in there and then build the soup and then add this back in at the end just like I'm gonna do but at least you'll get some of that residual flavor going in the pot before you start adding more stuff all I really have to do is cut up these vegetables let's do our shiitakes I feel like some of these we can leave whole because they're so tiny like these little guys and then any bigger ones, just slice them in half. All you need to do to prep the ginger is just peel it off, uh, peel off the skin like this with a spoon. And then we'll use the microplane to sort of grate it into the pot. I think the idea behind a lox is that it's, 
you know, it can be very immune boosting because we're gonna be adding lots of anti-inflammatory and warming spices. Plus the ginger is obviously good for the immune system. And then we've got lots of vegetables, which are great too, obviously. I think we're gonna add noodles though, so I better start cooking some, uh, or boiling some water for that. I have some rice noodles in the cupboard. You can make any kind of variation, like use what I'm doing as just sort of a, a basic guide, but use what you have, use the spices you have, and you know, improvise. If you have tofu instead of jackfruit, you could do that. Or tempeh, um, or if you don't like jackfruit. All right, so there's our little hunks of ginger. All right, I'm just moving things over to the stove as we go. For the peppers, I am just slicing them like this, and I think I'll just cut them in half so they're a little more, I guess, quarters like this, so they're a little more bite size. And then I'm taking the skin off, it's a bit tough, so because I've already pre-roasted these, you just scrape it off. And if you don't get it all, it's fine. You've seen me do this in the taco video, so you can watch that for more instructions. If you're gonna add these, again, not necessary. If you had a jar of roasted red peppers, you could dice those into the soup. That would be good and give you that same kind of smoky char thing happening. Okay, there's all the peppers ready to go. And I think everything else is just an easy, uh an easy tossing at the end. All right, I'm gonna pick out some spices and I think I'll use cumin, turmeric, maybe some Chinese five spice, ground coriander, maybe some garam masala, any chili flakes. And let's start with that. I have a large stock pot. I have all of my stuff out, the vegetables, coconut milk's ready to go, broth, pumpkin. Let's just get some heat on the burner. I've oiled my stock pot, but I am gonna add just a little bit more. I'm using avocado oil, great for high heat. I'm on medium high. I always start on medium high. I have gas and this is a cast iron uh, Dutch oven, but you know, adjust to your liking and always turn it down as you go. But I wanted to toast up some spices. Sure, let's just add some cumin in there. Remember, we're making this up, I don't really know. Turmeric, probably a good amount of turmeric. Let's add some chili flakes, ground coriander. I'm not measuring here. We're trying to make a curry-like soup. Garam masala is a great spice, I love this spice. If you don't have garam masala in your pantry, I'm sorry for you, but it is a mixture of cardamom, cinnamon, and cloves. So you could potentially just make it yourself. It also has cumin, black pepper, and coriander. So it's just more of like a concentrated mix of all of that. If you only had this, you could just use this and some turmeric. I'm just adding more because I have it. So you don't have to do this. Chinese five spice smells like pho. So let's leave it out for now because I don't know what we're going for here. We're toasting, we're toasting in oil. In fact, I probably need a bit more oil just to ensure these get fragrant, just a little bit. So mix those all up. This just builds more flavor, toasting the spices, right? If you had whole seeds, you would definitely do this too. I feel like I need more chili flakes. I want this to be a little spicy, but less is more, always add more at the end but I could tell I didn't have enough in there. Let's just cool it down by adding the celery and carrot. Now we'll add the garlic. Mine's already minced. If at any point your pan's looking dry, add some stock. Let's add the mushrooms now, because we want those to cook up quite a bit and add flavor to the broth. And you know what, let's just add the tomatoes. They're gonna pretty much dissolve into nothing anyway. Oh yes, the ginger, let's add that. We are grating it in with a rasp. If you can see this, you're getting some nice browning on the bottom, that's what you want. Then when we add the stock, it's gonna lift it all up and make it delicious. 
I guess I don't like when this stuff's mushy, so I don't want to cook it too much. So let's add uh, the poblanos in now. They're already cooked anyway. I'm gonna add a bit of stock. I don't know if we're gonna need that uh, chicken bouillon, but let's see, because there's quite a lot of flavor already happening. I'm just adding a bit of stock to lift up the bottom. Yeah, it's looking good. Oh God, you know what I didn't do? Boil the noodles, oh Lordy. Let's add some pumpkin. That's gonna help thicken it. Let's add the stock now. I'm gonna get a nice color on here. Now I wanna slow down the cooking here just a bit because I forgot the noodles. So let's just stir this up. And I've got it on lower heat, just so it doesn't get too overcooked. I don't like when the vegetables are mush, right? You want them to still have a bit of a bite to them. So let's just taste the broth now. <laughs> Spicy. Okay, I have to add salt, which I forgot. All those spices are really coming through. Let's also add the coconut milk at this time. This one's been in the fridge, so it's thick, but it'll all dissolve in there. I'm adding the whole can, I think. That'll just start to combine itself in there. I'm gonna bring this to a simmer just slightly to get the milk mixed in, but again, don't wanna overcook everything. So as soon as it's just bubbling, I'm gonna turn the heat down and get these noodles cooking. I think the noodles only take five to seven minutes anyways. We'll add the jackfruit mixture that I already have done. We'll taste it, we'll season differently if we need to. It needs a lime for sure, but it's missing. It's just missing that hit on the back of the tongue, the umami, I guess. So I'm gonna add just a splash of tamari too. I'm gonna say it's at least one whole lime, if not more than that. Wait, just in case, before I add too much, let's just stir it around. I like the thickness that's happening here. It's very thick. In fact, is it too thick? <laughs> now that I've added all that jackfruit. Let's add the kale too. Oh yeah. There it is, folks. I'm glad I stopped actually with the lime. I think that's to a taste thing. It could use like a titch more, but not, I don't think that whole half. It's almost a whole lime. If you have a pretty dry lime, then it's a whole lime, but I had juicy limes. So anyway, obviously you'll do that to your own taste, but the splash of tamari also helps. So whenever you're like trying to balance out flavors, you're going for obviously salt, fat, acid, heat, just like that cookbook, right? Not my cookbook, that very famous cookbook. I have it. Who's it by? Samin Nostrat, I always forget her name, or Nosrat. I don't even know how to say her name. I apologize. She's great. Love that book. Uh, and then umami is that sort of last little thing you need because usually that's the thing that's missing when you're like, what's this missing? It's probably missing salt sometimes or a hint of sweetness, but it's definitely missing that like umami that like covers the whole tongue and you can't describe the taste. If you can't describe it, that's what it's missing. It's umami. Gosh, look at this jackfruit laksa. <gasps> I don't know if I need to add more spice, but I got my chu chow chili oil out in case. Love that stuff. As I mentioned, I put it in lots of things. It's kind of like my new, that and gochujang paste I tend to rely on now more than like sriracha. 
so it could use more broth if you wanted to make it liquidier go right ahead but i don't mind what's happening here <laughs> I'm trying to get some of everything okay well anyway here's some jackfruit Mmm. Oh, wow. This is like legit laksa because I used to get this one in Toronto. Can't get it anymore. I think the restaurant closed down. I forget what it was called even. I'm splashing everywhere. I just gotta, I gotta move this now out of this shot. Mm. I like lots of cilantro. Can definitely use this oil just as a finishing touch. It's like pretty mild right now, so I would add just a little bit of this. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I also like the way it looks. I actually forgot to put it in the photo, but. Mm, well, this is a great quarantine meal, I have to say. I hope that if you've got a can of jackfruit lying around, you give it a shot. I feel like it was just maybe about one can or slightly less than an amount that's in a can that I used. Mmm. Oh, getting my hair in it, how lovely. And don't wear white, oh my god. I need a spoon too. one of these, these nice big Asian-y spoons, Asian soup spoon. This laksa broth would even be good if you have like a dumpling you wanna put in it, like a, like a wonton or something. Mmm. Instead of noodles. I quite like the jackfruit in this interpretation. I even liked adding those tomatoes in there. Mmm, you could easily add, you know, canned tomatoes if you have a left, bit of leftover canned diced tomato or something or fire roasted. You just don't want it to be a tomato-y base, so mm. don't use too much if you're using like a canned version. Thank you so much for watching. Another recipe. That's it for me. Mm. Leave some comments below. Because I haven't been on YouTube for a while, I definitely think I'm being like not shown to people, which they say isn't a thing, but I think it's a thing. So make sure that if you're subscribed or you're going to subscribe, which you are, cause you love this so much, that you hit the little bell that's beside the subscribe button. That will notify you when I post, but I do intend to post every Wednesday as per usual, like I was doing in 2019. So I'll be here, follow on Instagram. I am sharing a lot more tips and tricks and ideas there. Uh, regarding what I'm eating every day during isolation and all that kind of stuff. So I hope everyone's safe and well and getting a little more used to this. I know it's hard, but we can get through it. Okay, I'll see y'all later. Bye.